Good afternoon, everybody. How are we all doing today? I hope you're all keeping safe and happy. Um, so this week's video, I apologise, it's a bit late. I got three quarters of the way through editing and then I realised I'd missed out a massive chunk. So I'm having to film it again. <laughs> so, so this will be the second, no, actually the third <laughs> take of this video. And hopefully I won't miss anything out. Now, today's tale is Maud's tale, or the tale of Maud's Elm. Which is a place in Cheltenham. It's now a house, but it used to be, look, it used to look like this. A young girl was buried here called Maud Bowen. Now, this is her tale. Her tale is from the 17th century, so 1600s. And her tale is she was 21 years old when she died, but her death is something a bit of a legend that I've, I've found. Um, she's even, I think Incubus has even written a song after her, which is a bit... Hmm. So, Maud... Bowen lived with her mother Margaret in a little cottage in Swindon Village. Now they were wool spinners, so you know the whole the spinning wheel that you see in Sleeping Beauty, the like wheel, and that's what they did. And then you got the thin thimble, and then you just put it through, and then it just paddles. That is what they did, and they regularly went to Cheltenham Market to sell their wool to the passing trade. But on this particular day. Uh, I think Maud and Margaret obviously got separated or Margaret went home first and then Maud followed after tidying up. Um, but she didn't make it home that night, unfortunately. Now, what had happened, so Margaret had stayed up all night and hadn't found her and she was found in a stream. And fortunately she had passed away. So the Lord of the Manor, who were, were back in those days, you rented off the Lord of the like, Manor. There was no private landlords. It was the, the Lord had all the estate and everything. Um, <clears throat> so he commissioned a coroner to find out what happened. But it wasn't just Maud who had died that day or the previous evening. Her uncle Geoffrey had also died. He was found on a nearby bridge with an arrow through his heart, clutching slivers of Maud's dress on, so kind of imagine like that, or yeah, like that. So obviously an altercation happened between the two. Um, so the coroner had done all his findings, evidence. Remember, this is this is back in the day where we didn't have the technology and the knowledge that we do now. Um, obviously he came to the conclusion that Maud had drowned. Um, but the other conclusion he had come to was that Maud had killed her uncle. Keep in mind he had an arrow through his heart. So the conclusion the coroner had come to was Maud had killed her uncle. He was found on the bridge with an arrow through his heart. And the coroner then said that Maud had killed herself in suicide. Keep in mind that a bow and arrow was not found anywhere near the scene. So at this point, even I am suspicious as to Maud killing her uncle and then getting rid of the arrow, but it's nowhere near the bow and arrow, is nowhere near the scene of the crime. Suspicious. So committing suicide was seen as a big no-no back then. You were seen, it was literally seen as you, you either had the devil in you or a demon or something. So traditionally, you were buried at a crossroads on un, not un, un, unsacred, and you know, not Christian ground. Basically, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of it. And she had a elm stake through her heart. And of course, the picture I just showed you. I'll show you again. So this is the picture. This is where she was buried, hence why it's called Maud's Elm. And it was also an elm stake put through her heart. We're after Maud's death now, and her mother Margaret frequently visited her grave, but the Lord of the Manor didn't like this. And he'd 
this one particular time he had tried to get her to move along him and his men when out of the bushes an arrow appeared now of course because you couldn't they couldn't see where it come from the lord of the manor had cried that margaret was a witch so the lord of the manor had cried that she was a witch so they arrested her and took her into custody and she didn't get a trial or anything like that or a case or anything like that did the lord of the manor had decreed that she was going to die by burning at the stake so the next day she was put onto the stake the lord of the manor complete idiot and asshole and you know how people with money and power are oh, i can do what i want um he was tickling her feet as the fire was taking hold and it exploded into life and when the smoke had disappeared margaret had gone and the lord of the manor was dead with an arrow through him now we're going to go forward in time so this is about um a few few years i'm not quite sure how long after it's after not uh, obviously it's not like a hundred years or something um but a guy called walter years after maud's death and margaret's disappearance a guy called walter baldwin moved into the same cottage that margaret and maud had lived in he was a very sounds like he was a loner kept to himself and he only ever left the house to go and visit Maud's grave. Now it turns out this Walter Baldwin was in fact Maud, Maud's sweetheart from when she was alive. Now, if decades go by, so obviously this, this, this person never marries or has his own family because he's obviously still very much in love with Maud from all those years previous. On his deathbed, he confesses to what actually happened the day Maud had died. She did not commit suicide. What had happened was the Lord of the Manor was so infatuated with Maud. She was, from what I've done in my research, she, she was described as a very beautiful young lady. They lived in this cottage with Margaret's brother. And some say that, that Margaret's brother was possibly also Maud's father so he was her uncle and father for the old incest you know so the lord of the manor was so infatuated with maud that he wanted her for himself so he'd gone to maud's uncle jeffrey which isn't technically her father or margaret's brother the lord of the manor went to maud's uncle jeffrey and had basically offered him money and said look if you help me kidnap your niece I will give you this much money and what happened as walter was in a nearby field obviously not that far away because he heard her screams he was hunting so of course he had his bow and arrow on him he looked around to see where the scream was from and because he was completely and utterly in love with Maud, and it's keep in mind this is his sweetheart who he is seeing has is being kidnapped by her uncle and the lord of the manor so he shoots about uh, an arrow at the uncle which explains the slivers of Maud's dress in his hands and Maud unfortunately loses her balance and falls off the bridge now this is clearly obviously a time where not they not every bridge had sides to it to keep you from falling in so we can see in the lawn of the manor obviously legged it and took it to its grave what had happened that day we fast forward to obviously the time when margaret was visiting maud's grave and the arrow had appeared walter confessed that that was also him out of the bushes he was hunting again nearby and had heard the commotion and obviously kind of took it upon himself to look after margaret because again this is a grieving mother who's buried her child and still obviously was not convinced that her daughter had committed suicide let alone killed her uncle no parent should have to bury their child walter also confessed to killing the lord of the manor and but he didn't actually confess about where margaret had gone so i'm going to assume that she'd obviously moved on to another town where she was unknown and lived out the rest of her days in somewhat a bit happily but obviously then she couldn't go and visit her daughter's grave. Now, Maud's elm 
was torn down in May 1910 because it was getting obviously getting so big and it sounds like from what the research I've done that it was at the point of dying anyway so they torn it down and then put built up like a little it looks like it's a farmer so this is what it looks like now as you can see it's a good bit of land it's got a house on it with a conservatory and um, it is it was up for sale two years ago i have tried i've messaged the company it's up for sale to see if it's still up but i cannot find it on their website anyway this is what i found so there's a little bit of a, a a poem here now here is a tale a story to be told of a young girl but 15 years old impaled as a vampire her mother burned as a witch these were the crimes the crimes of the rich which you know just fits with everything of course, rich people even today still have a lot of power because they can throw money at it. Anyway, we are trying to get the building that's presently on, that is called Maud Elmer's on where it was, where Maud is buried, to see if we can do an investigation. There isn't many statements saying that there are ghosts there, but I mean, this, this building has been boarded up since 2019. But it's just finding, I think I'm going to have to go to the land registry to see who owns it and see if I can get in contact with them and write them a letter. So I will let you guys know about that. Um, <clears throat> so join me next week where I will be talking about all the ghosts in Pressbury. So I'm going to try and go for more, more of the ghost stories now as well as what I can find with mysteries and murders and stuff. Thanks for joining me this week guys stay happy stay healthy and love each other and i will see you next week